Today, I'm gonna to talk about old point and shoot digital cameras and why they do not take unlimited film photos. Unlike what the internet would have you believe. One really popular video type that I see making the rounds on YouTube almost every week is some variety of the video, this camera shoots unlimited film photos. And every time, without fail, it's a compact point and shoot style digital camera. And I've been in the game long enough to understand how YouTube works. You can see that on my channel. We make these outlandish claims. Sometimes we can get close to delivering on them and sometimes we can't. But the YouTubers who make those videos, the this camera shoots unlimited film photos, are just given a pass. In this video, we're gonna flip that formula. We're not gonna make an outlandish claim. In fact, we're gonna debunk one. So stick with me over the next 10 minutes or so, and I'm gonna tell you why that's an absurd claim. The primary reason that these YouTubers are making these dog water claims are based on the fact that these old digital cameras are based on CCD imaging sensor technology. And I think it's important to know a couple of things about a CCD image sensor. First and foremost, it's a digital image sensor with a lot more in common with the modern CMOS image sensor that are running around in most of our cameras and phones than anything related to film. And in fact, a lot of times CCD images look even more digital than CMOS image sensors. Let's take a look at Fuji's film simulations, for example. Is anyone gonna contend that, that any image taken with an old CCD-based compact digital camera even looks remotely like film when compared to Fuji's digital film simulations? I don't think so. Over the past decade or so, we've saw film photography mount a roaring comeback. And much of that comeback has been fueled by the same thing, nostalgia. People looking back to a simpler time, a time far removed from the screens and the Adobe Photoshop and all the digital workflow and back into a world of chemicals and grain and physical media. It's charming, it's quaint. People lock it. Film is very different to digital. And in the past few years, there's been a new nostalgic movement afoot. And this movement can largely be attributed to Zoomers, who are now perhaps looking back wistfully at cameras that they may have used in high school or elementary school. These old point and shoot compact cameras, dedicated device just for taking pictures. You can put it in your purse, put it in your pocket and take it with you everywhere. That's certainly a nostalgic idea as well. I totally understand folks wanting to get away from smartphone photography. Kids growing up in the late 90s and 2000s will no doubt remember those Canon PowerShot Maria Sharapova commercials. They were excellent in more ways than one. Many will be able to remember taking their mom or dad's digital camera, or maybe they were fortunate enough to have their own digital camera, taking it with them on a school trip, plugging the SD card into your computer and posting those pictures to MySpace. All nostalgic things. I mean, not the MySpace thing. So let's spend a little bit of time talking about that CCD imaging sensor technology found in these nostalgic digital cameras. And to go ahead and make the distinction right now so you understand where we're coming from, CCD imaging sensors provided a very effective way to capture images. And CCD image sensors were popular for a very long time, and that's primarily due to the advantages that they held over CMOS image sensor technology. But in the last few years, CMOS image sensor technology has charged forward and overtaken CCD image sensor tech. And just a few words about how CCD image sensors work. They're very different from CMOS image sensors. It's a technology that we now refer to as a global shutter. So CCD image sensors, the very first sensor technology that existed, already had this functionality. They could turn their pixels on and off when they wanted to. Something that CMOS sensors have just now got around to. For the longest time, digital sensors were only able to start and stop exposures one pixel row at a time. When this effect becomes apparent in images, it's called rolling shutter, and it isn't super cute, as you can see. CCD sensors, or charge coupled device sensors, are analog systems. They employ a charge transfer process to capture images. CCD sensors are praised for their ability to produce high quality, low noise images, which originally made it a popular choice for photography applications. And we can see some examples here. The other technology, CMOS image sensors, are the other technology, CMOS image sensors are complementary metal oxide sensors, whatever any of that means. And making them distinct from CCD sensors, which are effectively analog devices, CMOS image sensors contain an amplifier in each pixel. The presence of these additional amplifiers and the presence of a digital to analog converter in the system leads to some unwanted effects like noise, generally what we don't want in photography. So CCD sensors have an advantage. They don't have to deal with any of that extra hardware. It's a much more simplified capture process, but again, there are some drawbacks to CCD sensors as well. The internet tells me that CCD sensors had the image quality edge up until about the year 2020. And to me, that is wild. But it's due to the unique way that CCD sensors record information. But over time, technology has improved and CMOS sensors have undergone major improvements and modern CMOS sensors are thought to be the best image sensors
cancers in the world. And that's why they're used in almost all manner of scientific applications anymore. And almost every picture or clip that's taken on a camera or a digital video camera is taken on a CMOS device, just like the video that you're watching now. And if Digicams really take such good images and they have this really solid technological foundation, why are we all just shooting digicams? Well, there is one other important factor that determines image quality, and we're gonna talk about that now, and that's sensor size. My wife tells me all the time that size doesn't matter, but in the world of photography and image sensors, it most certainly does. And, and for the longest time, while the relative image quality of CCDs was very good and was oftentimes better than comparable CMOS technology, but over the years, as digital photography progressed, the image sensors found in cameras that were obtainable by normal everyday consumers increased. It's why over the past five, six, seven years that we've seen the elimination of point and shoot cameras almost entirely as a species. Anyone who has a passing interest in photography can go to their Walmart or go to their Best Buy on Black Friday and find an excellent digital camera and with a very large APS size image sensor for about two to 300 bucks. And while the relative quality coming off a CCD sensor might be better than CMOS, CMOS sensors still win the day with the enormous size of image sensors on cameras that we can obtain for very cheap. There's just not much benefit to running around with a point and shoot camera anymore. It's why they're no longer with us. Getting a really big image sensor is easy. You can get APS-C for two or 300 bucks. You can get full frame for probably five or 600 bucks. And if money's no object, you can even get a medium format CMOS sensor these days. And if I wasn't perfectly clear, the bigger the image sensor, the bigger the photo sites, the more accurate the information that comes off the sensor, the better image you get. In the words of Joseph Stalin, quantity has a quality all its own. And what about that comparison that these cameras take unlimited film photos? So let's take a look at some film photos and some digicam photos, and let's see what we're really dealing with. In my mind, there are basically three ways that we can analyze an image, and it's color rendering, the image texture, things like noise and grain, what does the image feel like, and then also dynamic range. What are the differences between the lots and the darks? And as for digicams, do these digicams produce really film-like colors? But like the next question is, which film? There are lots of films that have lots of different color palettes. Does it look like Velvia? Does it look like Portra? Does it look like Ektar? I don't understand that comparison. And to be rather blunt about this point, we're all manipulating our images in post anyway. So if you don't like the color of your digital image or you don't like the color of your film image, you can change it to look like whatever you want it to look like. Drag a slider, drop a preset, make it look like whatever you want. The world is your oyster. The next thing we're gonna talk about is image texture. Part of the video is gonna involve a lot of discussion about the differences between noise and grain. Now let me be completely honest, a whole video could be done about this topic, and maybe I'll get around to doing that one day, but we're gonna talk just a little bit about it now. But one of the main points that people make about CCD images is that they don't possess a lot of noise. They're very clean images. And while CCD sensors offer great performance for the relative pixel size versus CMOS sensors, advantage quickly disappears when the image sensor size is increased, specifically as it relates to CMOS sensors. Just like we talked about a second ago, really big image sensor, the noise advantage is gone. But how does, but still, but how does CCD noise compare to grain? But how does CCD noise compare to the grain that we find in film? Well, the first thing to know about grain is they're not evenly distributed across the frame. They clump up, and if it's color film, they're multicolored. The grain isn't just black and white. There's a character to film grain that can't easily be replicated because it's so random. And noise, by nature, is digital. So it's all square shaped, like a pixel. And it's uniform in nature because pixels are just like a little grid of tiny squares. And when you look closely, you can easily tell that noise and grain are two completely different things. With respect to color negative film, noise and grain are very different. And just because the grain is produced by a CCD image sensor, it doesn't really change the fact that it's still just digital noise. Little tiny square pixels. And that's versus the clumps of grain that could be multicolored, the randomness that's found in film photography. Very different things. And the last category is dynamic range. And I think this is really a push, but I'm gonna explain why. According to the interwebs, the human eye can perceive about 20 stops of dynamic range. Unless you have crappy eyes like mine, in which case it's probably like six. One characteristic of CCD image sensors that we've already talked about is they're thought to have great dynamic range. And obviously, and obviously the dynamic range of these sensors varies camera, varies cam, and obviously the dynamic range able to be obtained by each camera varies camera to camera, so we're gonna paint with broad strokes here. Looking at Sony's latest CMOS image sensors, they're capable of delivering about 15 stops of dynamic range. And you look at the most high-performing color negative films, and they're also capable of delivering about 15 stops of dynamic range. You look at CCD image sensors, and they're capable of delivering about that level as well. So really we've achieved parity, 15 stops, plus or minus a stop or two, depending on the model, depending on the camera. And really that's pretty great. Remember, the human eye can perceive 20 stops, 
All these imaging systems are capable of delivering about 15 or thereabout. It's all pretty good. Digicams are pretty cool, and that's mostly because of that CCD image sensor technology that's contained within them. CCD technology was a very important stop on the road to getting the monster high-performance CMOS sensors that we have with us today. But they aren't film. The workflow isn't like film. The images don't look like film. This is just not a fair comparison. CCD images don't look like film. They look like old digital. But maybe that's what you're after. And that's okay. If you're committing to taking an image with a digicam and a CCD image sensor, you're already committing to a digital workflow. If you want a compact camera and you're already committing to the digital workflow, my advice would be maybe just use your cell phone. The main point of this video was to poke fun at the notion that there are these little mystical cameras out there that are capable of delivering film-like images infinitely. They aren't. They can't. These videos are just wrong. They shoot digital photos in a really interesting way and sometimes yield really interesting results. But they're still digital images. They have digital image characteristics, pixels, noise, those types of things. But you may happen to lock, and there ain't nothing wrong with that. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about these videos where the photographer says, hey, this camera shoots unlimited film photos, check it out. So what do you guys think about these cameras that are supposed to shoot unlimited film photos? Is that a fair assertion or not? Let me know in the comments. If you thought this video was cool, check out this other video where I cast a wary eye at Digicams. But as always, guys, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.